Hey everybody, how's it going? So here we have an A1707 MacBook with liquid damage. Let's figure out if we can fix this and make it work again. Charger's taking 20 volts, 1.5 amps. It's turning on. If this has a picture, this will be a total next one waste of time. New Mac, $5,200, add 400 if you want wheels. You're making that up. Let's show you why that is. Are you all ready? By the way, Apple should never design a condom. See this over here? See this? These are the little rubber pieces that are supposed to go in the charge port. See these little rubber pieces that go in the charge port? They fixed this in 2018 and 19, but in 2017 and, 18 and 16, they had this little rubber on the charge port. These things pop off way too easily. Can you imagine if Apple made a condom? Like you just take the board out of the case and then the charge port immediately just pops off. It's so aggravating. Let's go over what's actually causing this board to not function. Oh, Who's it trolling you? Hannah? Was it Whoa. Me? Whoa. Not, not Is it the, you? Not <laughs> if, if none of you admit to it, Kevin gets the shock. <laughs> So if we look at this board, you'll see that the corrosion is mostly on this side, right by the power button. Now the power button corrosion could be causing it to turn on, off, on, off, on, off, like it. But I don't think that's the case. I think the real issue here, this over here is the sleep sensor. This is what's going to tell if the machine is closed or not. So this over here is a hall sensor. When a magnet goes by this hall sensor, it's going to change its output. So you know how transistors are devices that will allow current to flow through or not to flow through, dependent on whether or not there's voltage present at the gate. Think of this as a transistor, but instead of having a gate that's controlled by the amount of voltage at it, it's going to be controlled by whether or not there's a magnet near it. So we are going to touch this up because it's difficult to buy donor boards for this that have any of that stuff. The donor boards that I have access to, often I spend 15 to 25 bucks for a single donor board and it's missing the hall sensor. So we're going to... <laughs> Hannah, can you come back here for a moment? Hannah, firstly, that's for you. Is it really? Yeah, somebody in stream felt bad that you keep getting fucked with. But the second thing is... No, Hannah, you, you're not going to cry. What you're going to do is you're going to take this and, and you're going to start... Stab all of them? No, well, the thing <laughs> is, until they admit who's doing it because they don't want to rat each other out, just do what a terrorist does. Just start shocking each one of them. And they'll try it on himself. I can find their addresses. No, and now, and now, does this hurt? Yes. He tried it on himself. Here, here's how it works, Hannah. You hit the button, and it puts, it puts 220 <laughs> volts through their body. I, I am authorizing you to put 220 volts through everybody in that room until they tell you who's fucking with you. Now go. Human resources. Hannah, you can shock them and get the answer without giving up a donut. All right. Let me just open up a schematic and a board view to this before we reflow that area, just so I can show you on screen why it is the sleep sensor does what it does, or how it works within the context of the actual machine. Kevin saw the cookies and he goes, Hannah, or Steve can have a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> she can shock him. It's meant for cattle. So this over here is going to be our hall sensor. Now, if you take a look on the schematic, you'll see that it's powered by PP3V3 underscore G3Hot, one end is, p is power, one end is ground, and the other is what it shoots out. Now, a transistor works based allowing power to flow through it when you send voltage to the gate or you take voltage away from the gate. The gate is going to control the flow from source to drain. Here, it's a very similar principle in that a magnet is going to control the control, the, the flow from source to drain. So here, you have PP3V3 underscore G3Hot. Whether or not 3.3 volts gets to flow through here depends on whether there's a magnet present. If the magnet's present, then it's not going to flow through. And if the magnet is present above it, it will flow through. That's the way this hall sensor works. Now, what makes this design a little bit different than the older years is that you have two hall sensors. This is something I don't get. You have one on the left and one on the right. Because if you're at a point where the machine is closed on the left side but open on the right side, your screen is probably so fucking destroyed and cracked that it no longer matters at all whether or not the machine is sleeping. Like That's going to be the least of your problems because your screen is going to be in pieces. It also reminds me of this one feature in the A1278 
that I thought was really strange, where they actually put circuitry in there so that when the machine is closed, the trackpad is disabled. And the way I see it is, if the trackpad is getting clicked while the machine is closed, you've probably dropped so much weight on it from the top of the Eiffel Tower that the machine is destroyed anyway. Anyway, so let's just reflow this and bring this machine back to its former glory of working again and being a MacBook. I can't believe I called being a MacBook glory. Pink Senna, I cannot eat half the cookie until I am to an acceptable weight and fitness level again. No cookie. Looks like the employees are very much so enjoying the cookies. Thank you very much to JP for sending cookies to the store that the employees will enjoy. I think JP is clearly the employee's favorite YouTube viewer at this point because he's always sending treats and cookies. All right, so the connection to the board has been improved. Now we're just going to fix the exposure on this camera. There we go. Now we need to touch up the joints on the actual hall sensor itself. Paul, by the way, I, I switched over to DaVinci Resolve and I'm, I'm happier. There's a learning curve and it's missing some of the things that make editing easy and convenient that Vegas has, but it doesn't crash, so I'm a happy boy. That's a waste of time, Saltina. And a large liability. Well, for the person who talked about the trackpad circuit that I was just talking about in the A1278, we, I actually tried removing that circuit on an A1278 and drop kicking it over and over and over and over again and beating the shit out of it. See you later, David. And we could never get the trackpad to click and make the machine wake up while it was in sleeping. We tried. We tried really hard to break this, this thing. So I really don't get what use case Apple thought it was worth it to install that under. This is the stuff that makes me curious. Is you have the time to engineer and install a circuit that keeps the machine from utilizing the trackpad when it's closed. But you don't have the time to figure out if lots of popular audio interfaces that are in use by tens of thousands of people are compatible with your new machine that's released and advertised to musicians using the T2 chip. Because clearly you were willing to pay somebody to put together that useless ass shit in the A1278. It's Apple. I, I don't understand. I don't think I ever will. It doesn't save power because the trackpad still gets power in that state. It just ignores the input. Right, so now we got to go over the power button section. I really should get a microscope camera that has auto exposure and auto white balance. It's hard to find good uh, stuff like that. Like they make adapters that allow me to use my Sony, but it doesn't crop out the. It doesn't crop out a lot of the area that it should. Okay. Okay. 
So now at this point, I imagine that when I plug it in, it's going to boot properly into an operating system. And it looks like backlight voltage is 49. Gee. Hmm. All right, as you can see, it now boots up into a test operating system. So this boots up. It's got an image on the screen as well as a backlight. So it looks like the problem in this machine was the hall sensor. This is a very, very common problem with the A1707 MacBook Pros as well as the A1990 MacBook Pros. The hall sensor for these new USB-C machines is in the corner, and that hall sensor is gonna, what's going to detect when it closes. And if either of them, either on the left or the right, gets any corrosion on it, it's going to think that it's sleeping and that the lid is closed all the time and that's going to keep it from turning on. So typically, the liquid in this machine tends to go towards the USB-C port controller, which is going to keep the, C the charger at 5 volts rather than switching to 20 volts, and it won't power on at all, or it will power on, but you just won't see anything. It's a very common place for the liquid to go in this machine, and it is, as you saw, a fairly simple fix. You just rework that section, make sure that you don't leave any of the corrosion on there. I moved the hall sensor off a little bit just so that I could get a little bit of scraping in on the pads, make sure that I wasn't soldering on top of corrosion so that it doesn't come back, because remember, if you solder on top of corrosion, it will come back, and now it works. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something.